put in here life after money um, I finished this picture Aha, at last I think I did a video about it before when I was about halfway through it but now it has finished so it's been a long time and um, there's a lot of stitching in there and uh, I'm rather glad it's finished because uh, once I've got the initial idea and once I've decided how I'm going to proceed with the idea um, it then sometimes becomes repetitive because there's a lot of just plain stitching, back stitching in that so it has taken a long time to do that but as I got going on it and got halfway through it I thought I've got to finish it <laughs> I just have to keep going so um, how did it start out well it started as a piece of hessian hessian is this stuff and uh, I think other people call it burlap um, this came from my uncle's garage and uh, I've got quite a big piece of it here and I just thought well I can make something with that you know me I get some rubbish and I make something with it so I just cut the piece out and I had a little practice on uh, colouring painting I wanted to paint it I wanted to stitch on it so a little practice on the edge there what I think might work and, and off I went um, and I started stitching um, on top of the paint I painted it first big sort of two inch squares like that and, um, and I just did all kinds of squares oblongs uh, random sizes big sizes small sizes started in the middle and worked my way around to the outside um, yeah, let me, uh, yeah, I'll get it off there so you can see it's a bit closer. Right, it's turned into a wall hanging and I've put loops along the top and a piece of driftwood along, <laughs> along the, the top to hang it. But um, let me just get round here and I'll get you a little bit of a close up there, can you see? I've got the sun streaming in the window at the moment and um, I'm having trouble actually seeing the picture at the back of the camera here. So you can see there the, the different sizes, the different colours. Some have got three rows of stitching around, some have got seven rows of stitching around, all different sizes. I decided to put the do the outside edges not straight rather than a dead straight line across there and the sides. I decided to just make them random haphazard and uh, I think it's pretty much okay. There you are. Um, when I finished the centerpiece, um, there was still some painted colour around the edge, so I painted over that with black, um, black acrylic paint. So and, and then I frayed, frayed the edges, and stitched it onto this back in. This is just a piece of it does look a bit like the hessian but it isn't um, yeah I stitched it onto that on the front and the back black stitching so that it doesn't show around there and uh, hand stitched it's all hand stitched throughout um, usually matching cotton along the, the edge there and, uh, and then at the top put in the loops and, and then finish the stitching off across the loops and there you go right I'll hang it back up again for a minute so there you are that's done now I did put this onto I'd wobbly <laughs> um, 
a, um, a Facebook page. I'm on the um, uh, Textile Art Collective. <laughs> oh, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Textile Art Collective Facebook page. And um, so I, pu I put that on there. And it's, it's had um, 600 likes. <laughs> Um, lots and lots of conversation because um, I wasn't too chuffed with it at the finish I thought yeah it's been a lot of work it looks quite nice but it didn't just sort of do it for me you know um, I didn't get that buzz and go yeah I've done it I've finished and I love it it's nice, you know, um, but I'm not really sure. Anyway, people came on with um, their comments, their suggestions, their remarks, and um, some people thought it would be better in a frame. Uh, I now think maybe it would have been better in a frame, but the thing is, when I start a piece like that, uh, I just start with the fabric and don't measure it and then when it's finished try and find a frame afterwards well it's not a really bog standard size and it um, doesn't fit in a frame I did you see I've got that frame there but I could have framed it but it, when you frame something you need equal distances all the way around and that would is not equal. <laughs> um, it needs framing as well without glass, no glass. So that was that was a possibility. And uh, and you've got to have the right frame as well. I've got this lovely frame here, but that just wouldn't do at all. It would possibly be fit in that frame, but it's the wrong kind of frame. So I'm going to save that for something else. Now I've got a collection of frames picked up from car boot sales, uh, charity shops and uh, anywhere that I can get them free or very cheap. And I collect things like this. This is a board from a back cover of a sample book. Now the back is just a lovely piece of black. Um, but it's a strong board I could use that to actually put a picture on it but look at that there's two nice corners there and you see am I showing you right I'm showing you right two nice corners there but there's none on the top ah what a shame that is it's, and there's the other side of the board which I've taken all the fabric samples off but I'll save that because eventually it will get used for something. Now some people said as well that the plain outer edge does not do the centre justice. At the time I was thinking that I might do it as a colour. So I'd got two choices. I got red which I could have put around like that that would have been a lovely contrast to the black no, yeah I'm thinking there that actually would have worked um, and then I've got some orange I did think about using orange and yeah maybe the orange would have worked as well sort of just a thin band around the outside of orange yeah well you see I've put it together now and because I'm so eager to move on to the next thing and I'm now thinking about at some later date I might just take that off there <laughs> and put one of those colours on but then I give myself more work it's the hardest thing to choose the frame for your work um, I think what I really ought to be doing is choosing the frame first and then making a piece to fit that rather than the other way around 
But anyway, it's done now. Lots of people do like it. And, and I can live with it. And I might just leave it as it is. And if and when I have another exhibition, I will just put it up for sale. <laughs> as it is. Because I want to move on to the next thing. So anyway, um, that's, that's finished now. I'm going to move on. I'm not one to uh, procrastinate, is that the right word? Um, it's, what's done is done. <laughs> that was a lot of stitching. I really don't feel inclined to unpick some of it and change things. But anyway, I'll just let you have a little close up and, and then I shall move on to the next thing. I've already started the next thing, so... There we go. Let me just take this camera over here. Right. And what do you think? What do you think? Is it all right or what? You know, I think it's pretty much acceptable. It's pretty much okay. Am I being too critical? Am I being too picky? The thing is, I like things to be spot on perfect. Perfect that... For me, if I saw it in a shop, I would buy it. Um, yeah. But, you know, time is important as well. I've spent time on this. I'm not sure whether I want to spend any more time on it. Maybe the next one will be better. There we are then. Oops. I'm balancing here. I'm balancing and tripping over things. Me Queen, life after money. Uh.